today's episode is going to be about what a normal day in the life of a Liverpool cruiser looks like for us. And it's not always diving into crystal clear water, it's not always exploring an island paradise, it's not always, I don't know, doing a local excursion somewhere, and it's not always drama. It is more often than not just the usual everyday things that everyone does in their life, not just people who live in houses on land but also us cruisers as well. And that is today's day in the life. I mean we have historically done these kinds of episodes on days where we've had exciting things to do so that we could show you kind of the best of liveaboard life. But today it's cold, it's blustery, it's raining a little bit and we're stuck here in a marina in La Rochelle, beautiful La Rochelle, uh, on this grey cool summer's day and we're waiting for a weather window to carry on sailing but for today we have all of those chores that have just been waiting for us, stacking up slowly and today is the day that we're going to get them all done hopefully and I thought that this was a good opportunity to show you kind of a normal, a very very normal day in the life of a Liverpool cruiser. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Maybe a little bit different to what you're used to, but I think that it will provide some valuable insight into the realities of living on a boat. So the first thing that I'm going to do over my morning coffee is check social media and YouTube. We published a video last night. So this morning we are monitoring all the comments, we're reading everyone's uh, thoughts on the video, we are seeing how the performance of the video is going. Today's video is doing okay, not as well as uh, we hoped, although YouTube for some reason is being really glitchy. We've been having uh, messages from YouTube or emails from YouTube saying that their um, analytics are glitchy for some reason. So unfortunately we're unable to monitor uh, the performance as closely as we normally do. But nonetheless, we are following everything very closely, making sure no one is being too rude in the comments and uh, just catching up on emails and other kind of messages that we need to to get onto. So that is um, what I do over my morning coffee. Not very relaxing, <laughs> but it's got to be done. Yes, that is... Uh... <laughs> That's a checklist from some time ago. Checklist, laptop and charger and bin. I think we were, I don't know. I don't know what we we're doing. And that was like, that's several, several weeks out of date now. Inexplicably, Nick has chosen today to do the laundry. I think it was out of pure desperation because he has like zero clean clothes left. The problem with these cheap Chinese washing machines is that essentially, if you take them apart, as I've had to do a couple of times, the connections are made, they're just literally wires with 
a little plastic bag around them, an elastic band that's so poorly made, which means that they that's broken, so the, the motor doesn't work. Also, the motor is so weak that unless it will wash a couple of handkerchiefs. So really, it's just a, it, essentially we're using it. We've used it for a couple of years as a big bucket, and it works more effectively. Essentially, it's a glorified bucket. It is a glorified. It? Bucket. Why don't you show people our glorified bucket? Hello, <laughs> the glorified bouquet. Well, let's show the little hose because that's the that's well, the special a drain bit. Hose. Yeah. Uh, there was a timer here. Yeah. It's just it, there was a motor like underneath. But it's just I look. I took it apart. It's it's seized. It's 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 wrecked. Yeah. Do you know if they could make one of these with a really powerful motor in it, like a yeah. proper like washing machine motor? Yeah. I'd I'd buy it. Yeah. It was only like 20 pounds or something, no, wasn't it? Was, yeah, it was, it was 50 bucks. 50 bucks. It is blowing, I don't know, probably 15, 20 knots out here. So hopefully we don't lose any of it over the side. Well, the sun's trying to come out, so you might be lucky. Well, as long as it stays on the line and not like in the water, like a lot of other items of our laundry in the past. Change the line, my love. Change what line? The uh, kicker. Have you got the line? Have you already bought it? No, no, no. I need to. I can't. I've got. I've got to mouse this one first to measure it, Ah. What are you doing? Scantilizing the main. I figure that this is the, the greatest length that we'll probably ever need that kicker to be at. Oh, I see. Yeah. So really, I reckon about there. Even there, we're going to have a huge amount of kicker. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more, just in case. There? Yeah. So four metres less than whatever this line is. All right, so you're going to take the line out and then measure it. are drying very well at the moment. No, well, I did the washing at 8 o'clock this morning when the sky was blue and then looked at the radar an hour ago and saw that the resort Sabdelon, which is 30 miles north of here, was uh, getting a hammering. So this is just the, the back of this uh, low pressure system. But you know, it's always good to rinse your clothes twice. <laughs> yeah, they're getting a rinsing all right. Hello, welcome to lunch. Welcome to dinner with Ruby Rose, which just happens to be tortellini, which is singularly the greatest emergency meal you could possibly have on a boat. It's quick, it's easy, it's tasty. It's Italian food. You can add parmesan, add pesto to it. Dinner's in five minutes, and it's too cold for sandwiches. Lunch or dinner? Lunch. But you're calling it dinner. Oh, I'm being northern. <laughs> yeah, what's for your dinner? I ate that. Lunch. To lunch. It's it's twelve thirty. It's p.m. <laughs> So yeah, just a quick meal, so we can get on with some work this afternoon. Hey. We wrapped around your arms instead of being lonely. We could be gazing at the stars, but now it feels just like that. This is actually basil and pine nut tortellini with basil and pine nut sauce. So I hope you like basil and pine nuts. I should be trying something new, but now my body's sick. I'm tired of dwelling in the dark. It's just that my heart can't do it. Starts actually. Oh, I should think so. Why wouldn't it be nice? Uh, because, oh, I just pasta, pasta. 
pesto and pesto. Oh, yeah, it's pesto flavoured, isn't it? Oh, the tortilla in itself is pesto. Yes. The weather has cleared up, the uh, sky is kind of blue and kind of grey at the same time but we've got a little bit of sunshine and so we are going to uh, head out and do some provisioning which is also known as just doing the grocery shop but for some reason when you live on a boat you call it provisioning, don't ask me why. And uh, oh it's quite fresh, maybe I should get a jacket. It's not that fresh, as soon as we get into town it won't be fresh, come on. All right. I don't like things cold. Hold them in a little pot. Okay. That breeze is a bit cool though, yeah. isn't it? Did you get all your washing done? Yep. All done. All done but nice clean clothes again. Yeah, I think it's time to, to say goodbye to this little beauty. What? Uh, getting rid of our passerelle? Yep. It's got half around Otherwise the world. known as our plank of wood. Our Antiguan plank. Why would we get rid of it though? I don't think we're going to need it, my darling. We haven't used it at all since uh, Cartagena. Cartagena, yeah, there's no med mooring on this side of the, the side. Uh, Atlantic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on this side of the Atlantic. Yeah, well, one less thing cluttering up our side, it's not a bad thing, is yeah. it? Work you've done to her. You've given her like little wheels and oh no, oh no. little wheels. You've given her little wheels. Uh, come on, you. Sailors do tend to just like pick up random bits. Baby, your um, your bags open. call it provisioning like because we live on a boat it's not really provision like is we're just doing the grocery shopping does anyone else call it provisioning or is it just sailors provisioning theoretically forms the food for part of a journey I don't know, if I put this out there someone's gonna come back and say actually no it's to do with an ancient Roman term that comes from proviso otherwise known as Latin ancient Roman <laughs> <laughs> those ancient Romans <laughs> How long that plank of wood last? 30 seconds. <laughs> you know, it's a scaffolding plank with a passerelle. He's obviously got a little boat. That's hilarious. That must be a record. No, the quickest ever was when I dumped an anchor and I hadn't even got, he said like, yeah, we've got to have our anchor, it just literally. Phew. But I mean, the anchor was worth money. That was. Yeah, worth nothing. Well, I mean, it's not it was worth, worth something to him, but it's not worth money, is it? Well, absolutely. scaffolding plank, you know, two little wheels, three euros and some <laughs> string. <laughs> Okay, so. so I spoke to my mum this morning and she told me that my Omar and Opa, who are in their 90s, 90s I think Opa is 89, but anyway, uh, have just got a smart TV. When I go back to Adelaide, Omar, I'm going to come to your house and show you how to put our YouTube channels on. So this is a big shout out to my Omar and Opa who will be watching this video on their brand new smart TV, which I think is fantastic. Nick? Hey Hank, hey Wanda. <laughs> I still want to see those slides of your trip to Iraq in the, in in the, the 70s, 80s, 70s, yeah. 80s, yeah. All right. So everyone say hello to my Omar and Opa because they'll be watching this and uh, yeah, probably quite amused at the fact that their granddaughter is on television. So don't you think that's cool? It is cool. Yeah. Living on a boat means that storage space is always at a premium. This impacts many aspects of our lives, but provisioning or doing the grocery shopping is one excellent example. We only have one small top loading fridge, no freezer, and a couple of small cupboards for dry food. So this means that we usually only buy enough fresh food to last us a couple of days. Although we always have emergency tortellini on board, just in case. And despite our limited storage, we always find room for the essentials. I've never seen such a tiny pineapple.
a lovely sunny evening in La Rochelle after some pretty uh, grey conditions today. We have earned ourselves a nice cold beer. Nice bloody beer again. Yeah, don't you think, Nick? Well, yes. He shoots, he scores, he's Bobby Moore, he gets a table straight away. Get a table. <laughs> Sounds like it, something's just slipped into place there. Yeah, so the, the, the gearbox is slipping. I'm fairly sure that the it could be a clutch cone problem. Yeah, we've taken some decisions, uh, done a bit of a turnaround in more ways than one, and um, I think now is not the time to talk about it. We're still kind of trying to process uh, the things that we've been talking about, but we'll explain everything in a few days when we have our thoughts together.